If there is a message for us today, I believe it is to learn to live from our heart in love. These short lessons, hopefully, will help to inspire you to live with purpose, love passionately, and inspire others. We are the change agent our world needs. I'm Helen Taves. Step into the river today with me to explore the mysteries of God. They are not hidden from us, but for us to discover. Well, this is really great. Okay. So welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I'm going to turn off. If I, I'm going to turn this off. Close that down so I can see everybody. Here we go. All right. Well, yesterday I had a uh, uh, some of our some friends uh, were together, and one of them um, asked a question. We were talking about various things, and we were talking about some of the things that we are studying on this particular course. And she said. Why do I have to ask my heart? Because I know Jesus is in my heart, right? And I noticed last week when we were sharing, you know, um, ask your heart a question was was the assignment. And what what we did was we asked, um, and and when people responded, I'm going to say most people would say, I asked the Lord, and He. And so you are asking your heart because he is in your heart. He's totally in your heart. But what we're trying to do right now in, the, in this series is to understand that there is, there is actual science that comes alongside our understanding of our spirituality and how important it is to not, not take everything that we've learned and throw it away, but to realize the fact that what we are learning is coming alongside what we already know. And it doesn't mean that, we, that you have to change everything you've been thinking and everything that you already know, but when for the purpose of that exercise of asking your hard a question part of that is to understand and to focus on the area in your being that actually has amazing power right so we're finding that that we we actually move from our heart not just our brains we move from our our very being and it's our heart as a man thinks in his heart so is he and in that moving from the heart, when we do that exercise to ask your heart a question, really what it is, is to help us to see that our heart has that amazing place in us. Is that, where, where is Jesus there? 100%. Because what else did we learn? He's in every cell of our body. So where your attention goes, your energy flows. And we want our energy to come from a place like our heart. We don't want our energy to be just, just from our mind. We're going to actually look at that today about um, the, po the power of our thoughts, the power of our thinking, and combine it with the power that's resonant in us from what we're learning from Heart Math Institute. And that is the power of the heart and how that changes our electromagnetic field and our electromagnetic field actually changes matter. So what I'm hoping to, that we can do is not, I don't want anyone to think you're not asking God in your heart or Jesus in your heart or Yeshua or Yahweh, all that, that's all the same. But when I'm saying and, and using the terms ask your heart, it's just for this understanding that that place in us is so significant and there is such a power and it has a scientific um, background to it. It has so that we are, are really moving in a, a very unique way. So if anyone else had that, that 
question or was confused. I hope that helps a bit. Um, and uh, I think we're just going to we're just going to go into today's lesson on on thought, and um, or the power of thought, and we'll we'll take it from there. And I I'm hoping that some of the things that you hear tonight will explain that question a little bit further. So I'm going to go on to the share screen. <clears throat> Oops, wrong one. All right. Did that did that come up? Yes. Are we good? Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. So as a man thinks in his in his heart, so is he. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. <clears throat> Our conscious, we're just going to look at consciousness and subconsciousness for a minute. Our conscious is the place from our thinking which creates and projects new ideas. Okay. Our subconscious is our habits, our experiences, our traumas, and our repeated responses that are actually stored in our body. That is often why there is disease, by the way. Trauma, dis-ease, tra and uh, things that happen to us get stored in our bodies. And so our bodies are a very significant partner in this spiritual journey that, that we're on. Consciousness, in this place of thought, we connect our spirituality to our biology and create with our mind. We do it whether we're aware of it or not. We are created to create. And we can do this consciously every day, or we can live from the subconscious. The subconscious is our programmed self of help of habitual responses to past experiences. For instance, when we learned to walk, we never had to think about walking again, did we? You can, however old you are, when you learn to walk, you're still walking and you don't think about, oh, I have to lift this foot, put it down, lift that one. When you learned to eat with a knife and a fork, you don't consciously say, this will, I will pick up this knife now and I will put it on the food. And if I rub it back and forth, it will cut what's on my plate. It's a subconscious thing. You learned it and you just do it. So it is with driving. Sadly enough, some of us are more subconscious in our driving and, and less, less alert, but you learn something and it just becomes natural to us. We've said that. 95% of our behavior is controlled by our subconscious. We virtually can sleepwalk through life if we don't take charge. In our conscious, we create from our intentions, our wishes and desires, good and bad. So I'm going to ask you a question. How do you start your day? Do you command your morning? Do you, has anybody heard any, any teachings on commanding the morning? We can start our day by doing the, the most routine things. You get out of bed, you go to the bathroom, maybe, maybe have a shower, you go in, and into the kitchen, uh, make a cup of tea or coffee or the bowl of whatever you're eating and you're almost not thinking it's almost like you're sleepwalking and it's and it's something you just do all the time but I'm going to suggest that we start we can learn to start our day in another way and I've been trying to really share the importance of one of those ways and that is heart brain coherence to get into that place where you uh, be before you're even up and running, spend that five, six moments just in that place, getting yourself uh, settled, breathing, in love, feeling grateful that this day is done, and, and start engaging in what you're believing for your day. That's commanding your morning, not just letting morning happen to you. It's from our subconscious that we react to our emotions that mirror what happens to us or what we do repeatedly with, uh, without conscious thought. Now our subconscious is programmed by many factors, our parents, 
our teachers, our environment, our schools, television, movies, commercial games, peer pressure, you know them all. Programming actually begins in the third trimester of, ge of gestation. And one of my favorite books to, uh, 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 to share with people is called The Secret Life of the Unborn Child by Thomas Verney. Just a beautiful, beautiful uh, book for expectant parents. Oh, you know what? I don't think I started recording. Did Or did I? Did I start recording? Wait a minute. I'm going to stop here. I'm recording. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I had this uh, thought. Not very good. Okay, cool. There we go. The, there's a Jesuit saying that is that uh, they believe, and it's sort of their mantra for, uh, for their um, students. Give me a child until he's he is seven, that word should be seven, seven years old, and I will show you the man. The first seven years of a child's life is very, very programmable, very significant. All right, my thing's not working properly, sorry. As a child, our activities seem innocent. We can be uh, in learning in sports. This is how I grew up. We were, all, we're, we're always running, always in pickup games of sports of, of any and every kind. Or you may, you may have learned games, some very challenging and some just for fun. These were our programming. It was the good and the bad. This is the Hitler's, um, sorry, I'm, Hitler's youth in the 1920s, he actually used this uh, principle, give me a child till he's seven and I'll show you the man. He raised up an army doing it. Remember the 50s? I do. Most of you probably aren't, weren't born there. Um, I was born in Norway and we came to Canada in the mid 50s. And, I've, and I had uh, at that time two brothers and then had another two brothers and this was was normal life this was what was on television these were games now if we had this this uh, game we'd prob probably be arrested today it all begins and ends in our mind what we give power to has the uh, has power over you if you allow it world war ii was considered the world to end all wars and tragedy beyond. These were the games after World War II in, in uh, especially in North America, I, we, because we immigrated, uh, it was astounding to me that war would be a fun thing for kids to learn. It's even more astounding as I grew older to find out that these young children under the age of seven were trained up in terrorist camps. Whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. Your thoughts are the architects of your destiny. As a man thinks, and this is Harry Potter, the books we, that I personally love to hate, Here's, here is a whole culture, a whole generation of people. Uh, I, by the way, think that this is, she's a brilliant, brilliant writer. She really has been, was able to uh, captivate. I don't know where the kids are with these books now, but uh, she took a rebellious young boy and put him into witchcraft and the world followed. Now look at the books, many, many, many books, many hours of reading for, for young people and adults. There were games like Demons and Dragons, how that is possibly fun for leisure time, I don't know. But there's a study of adult gamers that showed 71% visualized video games imagery with eyes closed after gaming. 31 visualized imagery with eyes open. And this raises the question of what children experience following video game immersion. Younger children are even more impressionable. 
and what they see on TV or video games, they act out in real life. Children are in theta brainwave state, and which is similar to hypnosis. Just like us, when we pass the TV and get mesmerized, hypnotized, or we zone out. Actually, this is what the television does to us. A gamer brain is becoming increasingly problematic in schools where children act out scenes from violent, mature video games, resulting in acts of sexualized and physical violence toward others' children. Adults are subject to the same. <clears throat> and I saw, or I listened actually to a Focus on the Family show on this years ago now, and they said that um, pornography in, in, uh, when, when, when people, adults, children, whatever, are, are subject to pornography, it actually sears in their in, uh, brain in a whole different level. And it's very difficult to, for it to change. There's a, a, a whole brain science behind it. There are signs of video game addiction. When gaming disrupts sleep habits, avoid when you avoid school or, or work to play, needing to play longer to get enjoyment, feeling irritable if you can't play, feeling anxious when not playing, being consumed with thoughts about gaming, playing for more than six hours a week. And I would transfer all of that to our cell phones as well. That can also be an addiction that captures your hearts and captures your thinking. Our parents' voice, our early environment, uh, it all finds a place in our subconscious. Watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. I love that saying. And the first time I saw it, I, I actually had um, the opportunity and privilege of doing all of John Paul Jackson's teachings that he did. The first class that he, uh, or first course that he did was really quite long. You had to write essays and, and do a whole bunch of stuff. It was quite long, but it was all about character. It was all about watching your thoughts, your words, your actions, your habits and developing your character. That man believed that that was the strongest and most important thing that he could teach. He went on to teach about miracles and mysteries and dreams and, and visions and the prophetic and, and a lot of very interesting subjects, but it was all based on, on watching who you become because your character becomes your destiny. We have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 90% are the same as the day before. The same experiences produce the same emotions and the emotions drive our thoughts and our thoughts drive our lives. Most of us try to change our lives from the same position of our current thought and it doesn't work. It's like yelling at your computer that's been programmed to function and expecting it to change. We have to go into the program to affect the change or eliminate the program altogether and introduce another. <clears throat> the mind moves in the, our mind moves in the direction of our currently dominant thought. And I know that I've said that before because it's a, a coaching principle. You'd never coach somebody or tell somebody uh, to, about what they're doing wrong because their mind then sticks on what's doing wrong and it doesn't create the action of doing what you want it to do. For instance, I've just used these three. I don't know if you've, uh, I've, I've done all these three. I particularly like tennis and skiing. Uh, I think uh, golf is just a, you know something that ruins a good walk, but um, I know that when you have lessons to learn a sport, you learn it and you become fairly proficient at it. Then, and, and this is my experience actually, got very, very uh, proficient at tennis and had a fairly good game, won some tournaments, uh, it just enjoyed the sport. And the way that I ruined my game 
over and over was to take more lessons. Because every time I took another lesson, I had to learn, unlearn something to learn the new and better way. I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but these are three sports that I, I see that um, that's really relevant to. That's a little bit what's happening with us right now. We, have, we are deconstructing some of the things that, that we know and that are in our mind. We're not throwing them out. You don't need to because uh, it's all good. But we're learning more and in some aspects learning better because in, in, uh, I'm, in the uh, more and better of this, we are actually being able to, to broaden our scope and understanding and relaxing more about uh, just what we believe and who God is in our life. And it's a pretty exciting journey. But if we keep all of our old patterns, we'll never be successful or proficient in the new. And I really believe we are in that retraining, that deconstructing so we can reconstruct to move into the, the next phases of where we're going in our spiritual lives. I change my life when I change my thinking. I am light, I am spirit. I am a wonderful, capable being. And it is time for me to acknowledge that I create my own reality with my thoughts. If I want to change my reality, then it is time for me to change my mind. That's from Louise Hayes' uh, book, Spirit to Spirit. Absolutely delightful, delightful writer. And this is sort of one of those things. If we want to change our reality, um, I, I was thinking after we, we did that lesson on, on what happened from the cross to the throne, and I was reminded that Jesus spent 40 days after his uh, resurrection when he walked through the wall to his disciples, and then he said to his disciples, you put your hands in my hands, or, or put your hands in my hands, and in my side and see that flesh and bone, that I am flesh and bone. They walked with him. They learned more. They saw more. I don't know what the more was. We have, we have our uh, beautiful, beautiful um, history in our Bible and other, and other um, books of what Jesus taught and what he did. But when you think of it, if you want to change your reality... Jesus walked through walls. He didn't get mad at, at the crowds when they wanted to kill him. He walked through them. When the, when the lepers were there and needed cleansing, needed to be clean, he wasn't afraid of, of them. He didn't have to walk to the other side. He healed them. He touched them. He let the crowds touch him. And if I really want to change my reality then it's time for me to change my mind. And this whole series is about that, whole series about changing our mind to love, to walk like he did. And I'm believing for it all, including walking on water. New research shocks scientists. Human emotion physically shapes reality. This is the Joe Dispenza story. And I'm gonna encourage you to, to write that down and look it up on YouTube. It's a fantastic story. Joe Dispenza is a chiropractor and a very, actually very um, well-known and well-respected one. He was doing the, the biking part of a triathlon and he was hit by a car. And when he was hit, he was dragged for, I think it was 80 yards or however a long time, ended up in a hospital paralyzed and great pain and unable to move. They told him that if he was ever going to walk again, because his, the vertebrae in his back were fractured, that he was going to require a spinal fusion and steel rods to support the vertebrae. The bone grafts then grow into the bone and fuse with steel rods. So you can imagine he's a chiropractor, he's an athlete having steel rods in his back. Here's what he chose. He knew that the power who created the body can heal the body. He knew the power of our minds cooperating with the goal to be whole. 
and three and four days, he actually took listened to all the doctors and his friends who were professionals as he was or is. And um, uh, he made the choice to go out of the hospital. Friends let him come to uh, their home and helped him to support him in this process. And he chose to spend three to four hours a day. He saw himself healed. He saw his vertebrae intact. And if you look at this picture, he did not look at the, um, the brokenness and the possibility of steel rods. He looked at, because also he, it was a gift of being a chiropractor, he, he spent three or four hours a day constructing his broken back to be perfect. He said I, he would do it. And if at any point he lost his concentration and he didn't see it happen, he started again and he started again. He did this needing help to go to the bathroom, to feed himself, to do everything. He did it for hours and hours a day until 10 weeks into it, Joe's back was healed. He was working in his chiropractic practice and training again after 10 weeks completely healed. And the man hasn't stopped and has an amazing um, ministry uh, to this day, helping others to do the same. If you understand that everything is energy, you can also understand that everything you think, believe, and feel consists of energy. Your attitude or focus vibrates, and those vibrations affect the quantum fields that underlie constitute and determine the outcome of physical matter. Hence, your focus actually has the power to alter the appearance of your physical circumstances. That's what Joe saw. And we're engaging all the time with one another, whether we are aware of it or not. Dr. Jane Goodall says, we are all inter interconnected people, animals, our environment, when nature suffers, we suffer. When nature flourishes, we all flourish. We are so interconnected on this wonderful planet. Dr. Emoto, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you have seen his, uh, his work of how he's, he took water that was uh, frozen uh, into crystals. And when that water was subjected to things like the Mozart symphony uh, over on the the left, uh, that was the image that it, the water, the crystal formed. John Lennon's uh, song, Imagine, plays actually at uh, 528, and that's the, the sound of 528. Love, what a magnificent crystal. The uh, Fujiwara is a um, uh, river in, in uh, Japan. And this is the, what the water looked like. It was a, a um, very, very polluted river before prayer. And this on the, on the bottom of it, uh, it was after prayer. Prayer makes a difference. You speak to water and say, I will kill you. Speak negative and ugly things to it. It has very ugly um, crystals. When you say thank you or peace, beautiful. Our prayers, they've actually, he's, he actually uh, froze water be, that was prayed for before and after. And the crystalline after our prayers is beautiful. Matter or, or the um, thoughts or the words changed the matter. Words and thoughts and emotions can change matter. <clears throat> Here's the um, uh, 432 hertz sound. It has actually a beautiful frequency and a wonderful balanced um, crystal. I can do anything spoken into the water. What a magnificent thought, whether it was thoughts or feelings. There it is. Here's something you can do with young people. Boil up some rice. This is one of Omoto's uh, experiments. And actually I've done this with my young people years ago. Boil up rice, same rice, same pot, put it into identical jars. On one jar, write, I hate you. On the other jar, I love you. And every day, send your thoughts 
of love to the to the one love or just ignore the the hate one and the inter most interesting thing is that frequency that goes into the rice actually responds and the i hate you or negative emotions starts going rancid it's a fun one we can can we actually participate to control or direct the power of creation and the answer is yes it is no longer i who live but Christ in me. Uh, Neville Goddard, the power of awareness says, you must make your future dream a present fact now by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Why is felt love in our heart so important? Because when we feel the emotion of love, compassion, caring, or gratitude, that force is generated in the electromagnetic field we connect with, we know as the mind of God. If you hold something or someone in your heart, your intent will create what you are believing for. It can change matter. Your intent can make you omnipresent, thinking and feeling as though it's already answered. When the situation comes from your heart, it has the power to materialize. We saw that in Joe Dispenza's testimony. A few weeks ago too, we saw that there's an edited biblical text in John 16, 23 and 24. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hither ye have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy be made full. And we found out that in the original Aramaic, it doesn't tell us what to pray. It says, how? How do we do that? All things that you ask straightly, directly from inside my name. And we saw that inside my name was standing in Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, in the names of God. So far, you have not done this. Ask without hidden motive. And what are hidden motives? Our hidden motives of our heart are ego and judgment. No, don't ask with, with ego and judgment. Be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by your desire. When you pray, see the end result. See what you're looking for. See the, the desire. When you do it that way, when you, when you ask in that way, your gladness will be made full, it said. So over a year ago now, our 474 group, began an intention experiment. And I know that um, I taught this on, or for, for Kim um, Whitman on Heart of the Bride. So some of this is going to be rep repetitive for you, but I encourage you to listen again and make it yours. This intention experiment was inspired by oh, the power of eight. It's a, it's a book put out by uh, Lynn McTaggart, who is a journalist, and she, she found out that through many experiments, most, at, at first it was to change plants and, and help seeds grow, that when people put their, their uh, intentions together, okay, prayer intentions together for something, the, these somethings actually started happening, that plants would grow. And then they went into groups and ended up in groups of eight. There's a beautiful story around that. And they found out that when these people put their, in, in these small groups, put the same atten, uh, intention out for people to get healed or for situations to change, it started happening. So that was a form of prayer. Intention, uh, it, it, by definition, is a cause or a reason. A thing intended is an aim or a plan. We saw a principle based on Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, write down the revelation, or in some places it says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a herald or those who see it can run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false, though it linger. Wait for it. It will certainly come 
and not delay. So in that little mystery here, there's actually a lovely um, message on a form of prayer called intention. Scientists have done experiments with the very substance that we're made of that show that when our heart and brain are in coherence, when we set our intention from our heart, when we see and feel the intention with an elevated emotion, releasing gratitude, the answer is drawn to us and we can actually change matter. We can cure diseases in our body, intend for others' well being, healing. We can influence government. The intention experiment began. And we understood engaging the heart brain coherence and we and understanding the power of the heart. That's what we had started to get really good at. Then we took the principles of intention and we started an experimenting an, an experiment activating what we knew and what we were learning. And we saw it became another form of prayer. <clears throat> an intention. When you know, as Habakkuk, Habakkuk uh, 2 said, write the vision, make it clear. So we write an intention, what we're believing, something that God has shown you or what you're believing for. It can be uh, for someone's heal healing, it can be for your own healing, for your own well-being, for something that matters to you or to someone else. And it says, and make the vision clear, make it clear and measurable. When you write it, when you in the present tense, always in the present tense, because now faith is, faith is now. We're not believing for something that's going to happen. We're believing that when we're shown something, God actually has it manifest for us. And then we, we, uh, and then we begin to cooperate with the answer and not the problem. When you make, uh, when when you're believing for something, you don't need to tell God all the reasons that a person needs to be healed. He knows every circumstance around it. We don't have to spend a lot of time sharing that. We write, uh, we write it succinctly, and very clearly. Then we will speak out. We in our in our little groups. Actually, our our group was was. Uh, graciously very large and it has since divided into smaller groups which is uh, which has turned out very well when you when you get a group together when you have an intention written out and you make it clear the next thing is someone in the group will speak it out and we can all hold it in our heart and we hold it in our heart for six to ten minutes in that time, in that six to 10 minutes, we set our mind, our heart, emotions, feelings on the subject. We can see, feel the answer as completed. We have prayed for many, many people that have been ill. And if we don't pray for God to heal the disease, we pray for the health of that person and see and feel it as though it's done. After 10 minutes of this focus time, we would speak the intention again, and we release it to Yahweh. We release it to the Lord because he knows how to get things done. He knows how to accomplish whatever it is. And so many times in prayer, we not only ask him to do something, but we tell him how to do it. And we found out using this principle, the Habakkuk 2.2 prayer, prayer method, that when when we do it his way, he gets to do what he needs to do to get the answer. <clears throat> we're going to do it. We're going to go through it one more time, hoping that this will help you to really get it today. Science is proving that space is not empty, but a compassionate source field of information. We talked about that, I think, in the last two weeks. That compassionate source field is God, Yahweh. Yeshua, Jesus is our creator. That place called space, the matrix, the field, uh, this, there's so many names for it that you see that science uses. That space isn't empty. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. So this, this little uh, picture of a young boy sitting and just looking up at space 
just thinking, looking around is just a beautiful, that's just what we often will do. We will look. What, what I'm hoping that we can understand is that place that we look at is a compassionate source field. It's not empty space. It actually has everything, everything, health, wealth, wisdom, love. Hey, your new job's there. It's in that field. It's in the mind of God already. It's complete and perfect in there. And so in the picture, we see that young man sitting and allowing his heart and his brain to come into coherence. And we know what's happening there. He's peaceful. He's feeling um, peaceful and love and gratitude and, and just resting in the fact that in this field that he's directing his attention to, his energy to, there is health, there is wealth, there is wisdom, there is love. So what happens? How now, now we're going, now we're going to um, look at how this intention is sent out. When an intention or a prayer is being sent out, it goes in this like a gentle wave. So we're believing for health, just health. When we hold the intention, the answer for six to 10 minutes, during this time, the leader will speak out the intention every two or five minutes, and this will help keep the focus. So the field, the matrix, the mind of God now mirror, mirrors now. It's happening now. We send the intention out and the frequency is very slow. But when we start feeling and seeing it and imagining what that feels like to be healed. So let's use Joe Dispenza. When he was sending out the, the frequency for his health, he saw his vertebrae coming together. He saw it, it, um, it, what it looked like. He was able to keep that in his mind and very clearly. Can you imagine the feeling or the elevated emotion as he saw it really happening? That's where we're, we get to. We get to seeing the answer and feeling what it's like as though it's already done. When we open our hearts and intention to the feelings of love, compassion, and gratitude, that energy carries frequency, and the frequency carries information that will affect the nature of the reality that is in our thought. So when our clear intention, that prayer, has a feeling and elevated emotion, it will feel like the answer, not the problem. And this is the place where the wave, the possibility, becomes a particle. From this place with gratitude, we release the intention to God to fulfill it, his way, his timing. So we send out the wave for what we're believing for, for health. We feel what it's like to be completely healthy, to have that, the emotions that go with it. And when you put gratitude in that, it's the highest frequency and that gratitude actually is the energetic state of having already manifest what we are believing for. This is a way of praying. It's not giving Yahweh a God do list. You position yourself in the prayer. You stand in him, yod He vav He. You feel with your heart of love who he is and the intention it becomes who you are. You become the prayer. You're not just the person who is praying anymore. In China, I just wanted to, to share this if you're interested in seeing something work, how frequency from people's heart works. They have many, many medicineless uh, hospitals in China. I think it's the best kept secret on the planet. In, on YouTube, Greg Braden has a video and it's called Bladder Cancer Dissolves in Less Than Three Minutes Using the Language of Emotion. So if you just type that in, you'll find it on YouTube. 
what it what it shows is a woman in the hospital who is lying on the table she has bladder cancer and up the uh, you can see the the um, x-ray or the well, I guess it's ultrasound of the of the uh, bladder of the cancer. Then the per practitioners stand over around her, and they do this an intention prayer. They know how to see her body free of cancer. They're not dealing with the cancer; they're dealing with her health. And as they release this to her, this in real time, in less than three minutes, you watch as that cancer actually dissolves. It's a very encouraging movie or, or video. You must make your future dream a present fact now by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. As Here's the scripture that, I, that has, has just popped for me since learning this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is what you believe. And you know, the first word in that sentence, and I don't have it here, and I don't know why, I, did, I must have been sleeping while I'm writing. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is what you believe, what you see in your heart. It's the unseen that is evidence. And when, it's, when, when the unseen is evidenced in your heart, you'll feel like it's already done. It becomes the evidence. Faith is substance. And faith is now. This will require practice, intent, and a lifestyle lived from the inside out. So how do you form an intention? This is just the summary. You imagine it, you see it. You write it out in a present tense, faith is now. <clears throat> For instance, you'll write, our intention is that, the name, be immediately and completely healed of whatever. He will gain full expression of his bodily function and able to sleep peacefully. We'd be, we're specific. We're praying from a place of answer, not the problem. Measurable effects are the best, and we can believe for world peace, and we do. But as we learn, an, intent, an intention could be, we intend for crime in our city to be reduced 50%, for example. And I'm going to share some of those testimonies. If you hold something or someone in your heart, your intent will create it in the physical world. Your intent will make you omnipresent, thinking, feeling as though it's already answered. When the situation comes from your heart, it has the power to materialize. I know I said that before. I decided it needed to be said twice. <laughs> the only way we can change our lives is to change our energy, to change the electromagnetic field we are constantly broadcasting. In other words, to change our state of being, we have to change how we think and how we feel. And that's from Joe Dispenza. Remember, you are energy. I just, I love this. This is a picture from the movie uh, Cocoon. But I think, I wonder if we can just see ourselves as energy. We are energy. We capture, when we capture our thoughts, choose only to think. To, I'm going to read it again because I'm not doing well good on there. No. Capture your thoughts. Choose to think only on things that you want to happen. And you know what? That's our homework. That's, that's um, if you're going to do anything this week, capture your thoughts. Do everything as purposefully as you can. Engage Every morning, command the morning with only the things that you want to happen. Capture the, the things in your heart. Think of things that are pure, of holy and good report. <clears throat> I'm going to stop the sharing here. Here we are. Okay. All right. 
I'm stopping right there because I want to hear from you guys. Oh my goodness, Helen, that was absolutely incredible. That was amazing. And you're doing perfectly well. <laughs> perfectly well. Now, having said all of that, just as you were speaking and going back to our conversation before we started, I'm thinking that, you know, we can change even a person who is um, hell bent on doing something that you feel in your heart is not right, but go with God's, God's will for that person, God's will for that baby. And then we go, as you said, with the power of eight, I actually have the book, the power of eight. And how, how does everyone feel about this? I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. If, if I, with some friends, sit down with this intention towards this particular person, what do you think? Oh, okay, here, here, is, here is the thing. Everyone has free will. Yes. So we have, and that's, that's a place that I never, never want to invade. Mm -hmm. So when I think about writing an intention for something that I'm particularly passionate about, um, then the important thing is, what is, what is the root of, of something? I'll give you uh, an example. And, and this actually was one of um, the areas that we, that our, our God squad um, dealt with. Because when, for, when you deal with, for instance, government -ish situations, right? That, that you, just, you just believe is doing harm. We never pray about for about or for the situation. We pray for the answer, yeah. so that we can visualize what that uh, answer is. So our job, in in our um, intention or however however um, you deal with it, is to find the root. For instance there was a time where there was so much confusion in, in social, in uh, mainstream media, and we were becoming very confused and certainly not happy, not pleased in any way with, with what our government choices are. And so we could, in our old manner, our old, old um, ways that we would pray, we'd, we'd have this prayer meeting, we'd come together, and we would tell God what to do and what we're very not, not happy about here and, and send him to do it. But he, what, he, what he's showing us is that if we will pray the answer, so we'd say, well, what is the answer? Well, the answer was that truth would be revealed. Yes. In the same way that, that lies are being told, we intended for truth to, to be revealed. And when, when you, and it's very simple because the, the purpose of an intention prayer is to hit the spot, is to be to, to direct, right? We're not, we're not presenting God with a situation that he is unaware of. He knows what's going on. Now he wants, where is your heart in it? Well, our heart is for truth. Our heart is for righteousness. When righteousness rules a nation, the people rejoice. And so we take time to dialogue what that answer is. And we write it out. And we write it out very, very simply. And then we spend the time as we, you know, when you send the wave out, and we spend the time in that intention for the five or six minutes, seeing only the answer, seeing our nation at peace, seeing the, the government uh, in, in a, a place of unity, whatever it is that we're, we're praying for. Do you know that that's a very difficult time to do 
to get your own emotions into that place where where you're only thinking what's pure, holy, and a good report. Because there's so many things you want to say. There's so many things that you're really, um, don't you know, God? <laughs> don't you know what this is doing? And yet, when, when we have prayed situations that, that way, we've actually had newspaper, mainstream, and we do, we do intend that just in, I'm just saying some of the things that, we've, that we have uh, dealt with, we, in the same way that, that th things have been reported on mainstream media that have hurt, we have asked that the same measure of truth be revealed the same way. And, and we've actually had newspaper headlines say this, the exact same thing that we intended for a couple of days before. Yeah. So your situation, I'm, not, I'm just saying all of that to say this. When you're, when you're dealing with uh, somebody else's free will mm -hmm. and free choice, yeah. how would you then intend for that person? And let's open that up. Uh, Yolanda, share, share your situation that you're pa passionate about. Well, it's the baby, you see. And I, I have been asking the Lord about it, as I said. And I have been going in love. I knew I had to respond in love, not by judgment, not by anything else, but by love. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it's because I'm a seer and I'm seeing this baby in her womb. I'm seeing the baby in her womb. And she is under a very heavy medication for a condition that she has. So that medication that she's taking is affecting the baby. The baby isn't um, developing as it should. Okay. Now, she's a big girl, and her tummy is really tiny, Helen. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that baby, and I'm crying to, I'm, I'm saying, Lord, please show me how you want me to respond. Because my heart is for children and for babies. And I'm seeing this baby. And I'm seeing that it's before it's even born, it's behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. And then you're having this, this vaccination that is even going to further affect this baby. Mm -hmm. I know it. I know it because I've gone to the Lord about it. And I'm saying, Lord, okay, so just open their eyes, open their hearts, open their ears to your truth. What is it that you want them to see, want them to know? Okay. That is what I am asking. Okay. So your, your intention then is that the parents hear and hear from the Lord. Yeah. What, what they need to know to keep yeah. that baby safe. Yes. That's, that's just it. Yeah. So in, in all of that, I know I can feel your love. I can feel your emotions. I can feel your heartbeat there as well. Yeah. When, when, we, when we use this, this principle of prayer, are you able to write the intention very simply that, that, the, that, um, that the parents, you can write their names, the parents... Yeah. Uh, will uh, will, rec will receive uh, truth. God's how about God's truth? Yeah, truth to all to all decisions. Yeah, regarding the health of the baby. Yeah. Okay. So that that is a very very simple. Um, to the point. And you see, when you hold that in your heart with love, you direct that to the Lord, you release it to him, he can make sure that's done. 
and un unless the Lord tells you to do something or or send something or anything, um, then you just stay out of it and let him work. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. After that, I have not I have not spoken. I've not said anything. Right. Nothing. Right. But could I share something that I responded to her with? Because I knew I had to respond in love. Mm -hmm. So this is what I, I, um, I responded with. And, um, okay, here we go. Okay. Oh. Okay, this is what I said. Uh, her name is Marissa, this girl who's pregnant, right? Hi, Marissa, just wanted to share the following with you. We addressed this last Tuesday during our Ascension meeting. This also covers your baby. Yolande sees all these babies coming out like an army sing, singing the song, ground control to Major Tom. Enemy sees those babies born now are coming out with amazing capabilities. They are coming out fully strong, knowing, fully anointed, fully blessed. So we speak now to these babies in vitro, all those in the womb, all those about to be born, all those just born. We say, come into your full identity, come into this realm, knowing who you are and walking in that. Scripture says, that little kids will be doing exploits. We thank Father that this generation is being birthed now as we speak. Generations to come will know Father in such an intimate way that the light in this world will be the Lord's glory. No more darkness, sickness, disease, pain, suffering. We speak life to all those here our families, all those whom we hold dear. We ask that our ears open, our eyes see 360 degrees, hearts open as we put on the mind of Yeshua. We decreed and declared this. Lots of love. Well, that's a, that's a beautiful encouragement. That's a beautiful vision for a, a mom who's... Uh, carrying a child to have spoken into her and to be able to uh, to read. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. You're you're doing everything you can. It's a beautiful that's that is beautiful. That's very powerful that that uh, decreeing that and and declaring that you can feel Holy Spirit on that. Yeah. Anybody like to speak to this? Gigi, you, you're unmuted. Um, uh, before you said your, um, before Yolande mm -hmm. mentioned her declaration and her ascension and what she saw for, for this uh, young mother, which was beautiful and bravo Yolande. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was thinking, I was putting myself in, in the situation of how I would feel um, to go into an intention. And I was thinking it's such a practice to um, see the answer without, without feeling uh, the angst about the situation because it's very easy to do. And we are very conditioned to, to feel that way, even by our, our emotions and how we feel for others, our compassion or our sympathy or our empathy for, for something, but that's not what we're there to do. We're there to see uh, in the spirit and to intend on the answer. So it is a practice to focus on that because we tend to not, even, even in a, in a well-meaning, emotional, how we feel for someone way. So that has been a, a challenge for me in, in our times of intentions at times to stay focused on 
what it is we're seeing as the end result, uh, as opposed to getting caught up in the, our, mm -hmm. our empathy about, about the situation. So that, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Uh, M. Yes, uh, I you know you mentioned about uh, being in the present tense, and uh, when uh, uh, you were you were a kind of uh, speaking out the the intention for uh, Yolanda's uh, Marissa, I guess it would be just uh, the will receive yeah. is just, is not present. It's like receive. <laughs> so I just wanted to bring that to note because that's something that we have struggled with our group that we've had to learn how to watch our words to put it into the present tense that's right <clears throat> yeah uh, now faith is like every faith faith that isn't now um i don't know where it is because we want to be believing believing for now it's, it's funny you should say that i crossed it out when i was writing it down in my notebook so thank you for bringing that up that's a really good point when we send out these intentions, we send it out in, in as though it's present to us so that the parents receive God's um, uh, truth to all that has uh, effects to all that affects their the health of their baby. It, it's a it's it's simple, but it's really, really powerful. It's really, really powerful. And the answer to to getting people to get do you have an intention group or ascension group that you uh, are with you land you're you're muted yeah yes i actually uh, facilitate for a uh, global ascension okay i have i have a group for gain i also have a group for um tables of priesthood with um heather reyna and ian clayton Plus, I have my own home group, so I've got three. Other than that, you don't have anything to do. Oh yeah, I'm I'm involved with uh, other groups as well, <laughs> and every every Saturday, um, we um, we contend for human trafficking for the children for all of that. Uh, I do that with Karina uh, Pataki. Uh, and plus, um, I, I'm also involved here on the ground um, with uh, a person called uh, Rebecca Milne. Um, and uh, we meet regularly. Plus, I have a bench of three. <laughs> Every... <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you were, I knew you were a little bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Do you do you feel that? Uh, how do you feel about uh, the that intention for the parents? Well, yes, I I am going to going to do that. Uh, write it out and uh, clearly and sit with it uh, for the parents. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I'm, I feel very, very strongly because it's been sitting on my heart and it won't budge. Right. It just won't budge. Okay. Usually, when I when I address something, and um, sometimes I gather a few people together and we, you know, just content for whatever. Um, I, I do the I do that as required. Uh, whenever, uh, and I think I will do it for for this because I'm I'm really I'm really really concerned about that baby. Right, right, yeah. Well, I love your your in um, your declaration prayer that you had there is beautiful, beautiful. They're blessed to have you in their life. Oh, thank you, Helen. Thanks. How are you? How's everyone doing? I don't know if I see any hands or anything. I don't. 
Where am I? No? Any comments, thoughts, feelings, emotions? Verna? Yeah. I, I just wanted to share that uh, something that changed the way I pray was a couple, couple of years ago already. We, we were going to, you know, have the hot seat where we pray for somebody in, in the chair. And uh, on the way over to the chair, the Lord said to me, you don't have to convince me. It's already done. So, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. 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 So we that's have very now. Very now. Very now. You know, when you um, in our in our um, four seven four group, we have one of our our um, moms. Moms. She is. One of the, the gals, it, she calls herself a hood mom, which is an odd, odd name maybe, but she, what she is, is that she is a, she asked the Lord for Africa years ago. And what he's done is it, he has centered Africa a couple of times, but what he's done is he's brought Africa to her. And so she's very, very effective in the core area here in Winnipeg with ministering to the immigrants and uh, to the, uh, is particularly to those out of Africa and uh, has amazing relationship. She lives right in the core area. She, it's, it's not unusual. We've actually been on a meeting where there's gunfire gun outside her door. <laughs> it's, it's real up close and, and personal for her. And she was in tears one, one meeting because of the amount of, of deaths and homicides that they, we were experiencing in the core area in Winnipeg. And uh, so we were just learning about uh, uh, praying with, in, with intention in this format. And she's, she's, I said, well, if we're going to intend for this, how are we going to do it? And she said, well, I want it all to stop. And everybody agreed with her. We want it to stop. The reality of that in a, a group that's learning uh, and what Lynn McTaggart recommends in, in her book is that you do a measurable um, an intention. So we all want world peace. We, and we have it with, we know we're, as we're, we're learning about the power within us and how God works and, and just what we are able to do. We have that power to get people together and, and uh, to send out that kind of, of love from our hearts, change the electromagnetic field. It's all true. What we aren't is trained in it. What we aren't is, is learned so that it's just part of our, our nature and our being. And that's part of, you know, exercising our muscles and getting stronger. So we decided that as much as we wanted the whole thing to, to stop, what could we truly believe for and not uh, complicate in our minds, not, not find ourselves conflicted with. So we, we settled on, could we believe for, a, a, I think it was 25 or 30% reduction in, uh, in the homicides. Could we believe for that to start with? And we all settled, yes, that's a measurable um, you know, quantity and we can do that. So <clears throat> we did, we set our intention. We wrote it out that, that, uh, uh, the, that Winnipeg would, would, that uh, would crime is reduced by, or homicides reduced by 30% and uh, left it at that. We spent time in that attention, intention. We saw it happening. We, we allowed that gratitude we, to uh, bring it in, released it to the Lord. Do you know, three days later in the, in the newspaper headline on the front page, that's exactly what the, what the newspaper said. A homicide's down 
And that is encouraging when you, you see that it doesn't make you feel as, as helpless. And now what does it do? It brings our, our, our now faith is the substance of things hoped for level up a notch and our measurable effect. If you can do 30, that can happen. Let's go for 50, you know, it can, and, and those, and, and that's how it works. So we need to learn that we need, that's a learned thing. It's a practiced thing. This is a, um, we, we, uh, we're having a hard time praying other ways. Uh, there are a lot of other ways that, that we can pray as in petition and supplication and, and um, making our requests known to God. But we also know we, that, there, that, that we can use things like theophostic uh, prayer or lie busters or taking things into uh, the courts. Uh, we know that, or or decreeing and declaring in a in a in a um, ascension time. So we have all of this that we're learning and and putting together. What we're finding is the setting our our hearts in this intention model is bringing very very uh, um, immediate immediate results. We're seeing the measurable effect of it. Jackie, you have to unmute. I, I guess what I'm hearing you say too, Helen, in that is that you had a unity in your group. Yes. Oh, I think that was probably an important aspect of it, was it not? Yes. And, yeah. and that's, why, that's why we wordsmith the intention. That's why M's uh, input to keep it in the present, like fo following the, the uh, rules of engagement, as it were. That's really important. We, we actually don't intend if we're fragmented, which then we just feel it's just not the time. It might be a passion or it might be a desire. We might be upset with something. Uh, you can, you know, name whatever. Um, but until unity is important, our hearts need to be aligned. Absolutely. And there are times where uh, we, we've just ha had a situation in, in our group where uh, one of our, our gal's sons um, got very, be became very ill and has been on a respirator for eight weeks. And it has been a really uh, uh, testing time because there's a whole bunch there. I mean, there's uh, literally hundreds of people praying for this young man. We, we did an intention for him uh, at the very beginning as, as um, he became ill and, it, and he was diagnosed with COVID that um and and so this the god squad the few the few of us that got together we we um did this intention to see him whole to see to see him up and running and um it's been a very difficult time but a wonderful time in training because it's a long time to keep the vision of, of seeing it now in the midst of doctors giving up hope. A couple of weeks ago, they actually brought in the family to because they, they were not able to do anything. Today, he's been transferred for, uh, to another ward to have him off the, the, the uh, drugs and into rehabilitation. It's a very, very it, we're in a training. We are in a, a training. And it's really important to keep the vision, to keep the answer in front of you and not be swayed by what you see and feel. Uh, go with God on it. Go with him. And can I add on that note, I was, when I heard that the family was called in, I was quite upset. And so I had to put that aside and hold on to the original intent of where I saw him standing up and walking out. So it, it was a great lesson. Um, 
Yeah, because that could have sidelined my intention and the original intention if I would have held on to that frustration with regard to the family being called in and such. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and when you're praying for health in our, in our group, it, it uh, sometimes gets difficult because we've got paramedics and nurses and, uh, you know, people that know, <laughs> know a lot. And, you know, when you, when you get everybody into the, the same miracle zone, miracles happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who, who they? Go ahead. Yes, I have a question. So I, I asked this on a different group. I asked if you, uh, if your intention group can like, does it again in like a second time or a third time? And you had said no, but, uh, but I think the answer is each person in that group holds that intention. You may not meet again to, you know, in a group, do it for 10 more minutes, but you keep it in your heart until you see it fulfilled. Is that true? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and that is, and that's our that's the challenge, right? Yes. And it's also uh, the reason why it's important to live out of our heart because it's so easy to start judging. It's so easy to um, uh, say, "Well, this is happening because of of that." Whereas that's not the intention. The intention is to see wholeness, to see, like like Lana said, to see him walking out. Amen. And and so and and the the book is the power of eight. But in in the groups, do you see a certain number or at least a certain number being more powerful or more yeah. ideal? Yeah, thanks for asking that, actually. Um, see, what we did, she doesn't, um, Lynn is, Lynn's a brilliant writer and has amazing testimony and results from, from uh, her years of doing this. And as a journalist reports it and writes beautifully, she, and she's also, um, and she does conferences and that, and uses terminology like, uh, oh, and she wrote the book called The Field, which is, is really the, the mind of God, where we're all, what, what we're trying to bring into science and spirituality together. So she, uh, she doesn't use the terminology. She doesn't use Habakkuk 2 too, write the vision, you know, um, stand at the ramparts and see, and write the vision, make it clear so those who see it can run with it. That is the principle. But what my hope is, is for us to put it into a language that we already have of uh, in our faith walks, in, in, in the Bible, that help to make it even more clear. Because the, the church is not used to using other terminology. We're not used to calling God creator or the source or even the mind of Christ, even though the, the mind of Christ is throughout the, the um, uh, New Testament, we're not used to using it. And uh, what, what happened to me is when I saw the science and the spirituality come together, it was sort of a double whammy. And I went, Oh my golly, this is that. And we can and we can step in with full abandon into it. And so uh, what we what we're see, what we're seeing, like when when uh, Lynn says that you release your intention in into the into the field, we release it into the hands of the Lord or the hands of God or Yahweh, whatever terminology uh, your stream is, is comfortable with. But we see him in it all. And it's strengthening us. And I'm hoping and I, I, well, not just hoping, I'm believing it's going to shift us to actually see us to operate and live as he wants us to as he did. Unlimited unlimited to the crazy stuff to the 
the uh, ladies of gold, you know, going through the, the portal and coming back with gems from heaven. Uh, the, that's becoming our reality to, to transform, to, to uh, relocate, trans, trans uh, locate. That's got to become our reality. And scientifically, it's possible. It's possible. And we want to step into that. And if we can learn to train on the, the little things like this, what it's doing is it's changing our hearts. And the reality then gets lodged in our heart. And once that becomes a, a habit and we're expressing life out of, out of gratitude and love and caring and compassion, we're without excuse. We'll ju we're just going to start seeing it. Um, I'm starting to see it in my own life as I because I, I do a lot of heart work and, and meditation. And, um, and one of the things I'm going to offer is, uh, you know, Christ centered meditation, which flies against a lot of things that I ever learned uh, growing up in, in uh, organized religion. But what it's happening is I'm getting transformed because I'm doing the inner work. And then, uh, and then what happens is he takes over and takes me to to crazy crazy things that i i'm not at liberty to to share i will i will share as we i i just want the foundations laid so well and i i don't want anyone looking at me you know i i want it to be an us happening i want it i want it to be because I firmly believe the time of celebrity culture is over. And I firmly believe that it is we, that we are all interconnected. That is just not a saying. That's just, it, it is our reality. Whether we're in Australia or New Zealand or Africa, whatever, we are in it together. Not only in it together, but we are in together <laughs> forever. If you don't like me, I'm really sorry you're stuck with me forever. Yeah. Well, that's not possible not liking you. We love you. Oh. <laughs> <Very cute. laughs> I, can I ask a question, Helen? I know it's the power of A, but is there a yeah. minimum number? That was the question. How I didn't even answer the question. Elizabeth, I'm glad you're laughing at me. That's awesome. Um, okay, so um, Lynn, I, I, I want to give respect and honor to Lynn's book because she really has uh, uh, done a, a good job in her research and that Power of Eight came up, up um, in her, it, it was a comment that, that um, it came up between she and her husband and they went, oh, that's a good idea. Let's go with that. So uh, what, we, what we find is our, like our God Squad is six. There's six of us. We like having, it's not because you're an ex inclus exclusive at all, but it, it's easier to get six people together, especially in this time of, um, you know, Zoom ability or even time and, and just how we're, we're all different. Some are working, some retired, some um, running their own, own businesses. Schedules are, are goofy or in school system. And so what we are uh, finding that it's easier to, to uh, say, this is happening, can anyone come? M most of the time we're, we're able to hit it at some point to come together. Lynn in her book recommends that you set a time for your intention group every week, same time. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant uh, thing to do if you can do it. For us, it's working uh, in just a, in a more a more freer flow, and um, and you know so now is there a minimum? I think personally the intention model can be one person. I I I sincerely believe that we you and God are a majority, and um, I don't I don't see the have to. I do know that there's a synergy in when people come together. I can feel a whole lot different when the, the group of us together and then our, our um, uh, Tuesday evening group, we are 
uh, almost 20, 18 uh, now. And when we're all together, there's another, uh, uh, you know, level of being together and knowing each other and trusting each other and all that. So for the, for the intention group, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. I think that uh, where two or more agree is touching anything that he is there. So that's, that's sort of how I feel. How do you feel about that, Gigi? Oh, no, excuse me. Em's got her hand up. Okay. Yes, I, I, there was a couple of comments because you, uh, the one thing that I know that we at times uh, when we're not in that same place, uh, we, uh, our group likes to do an ascension uh, to, to get con that connectedness with, with God. And, and so that we can become of one accord. And of course, we go through those stages. It's a little different than it, what it was, you know, a few, a couple of years ago when we started with Ascension. And then we go in, sometimes we do an intention. Sometimes it's just an Ascension and, and it's just the decree and declare and all that kind of stuff. So, so it, but in the end, it's just so powerful because we get to that unity, that unified place that we are all in agreement with it's god it's not us it's god that that is that is instrumental he is the one that is directing yeah uh, our thoughts and our prayers uh the other thing that was mentioned and i can't remember who i think it was lana that asked about the the uh you know or someone mentioned about sticking to the intention now now what we've had once so far is uh we had an intention for this individual and uh as connecting with her uh we ended up I, I i said okay should we revisit and maybe zero in on a different place so we're still holding the initial intention but then we zeroed in to what it was and it was such a powerful meeting that night that uh and of course it ended up i believe with tav <laughs> you know the living uh, hebrew letter of tav but it 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 just ended up being so powerful i was so excited and I, I i asked the ladies you know like shall we share it with her and so the next day we shared it i shared it with her and she got so excited because it just meant so so much to her uh you know like i mean but we're we're holding those intentions even though that this is a second intention similar but different it's 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 a different target in that same situation so uh it's it's like when we liken to uh, situations you know like we do our canada in, intentions and and we discover that you know well we've already prayed in that way we've already intended in that way we need to go deeper or we need to direct it in a different way so then we do that and uh, it's just so powerful doing it this way. It's so much easier than, than the way we used to pray way back in the church age. <laughs> you know, yeah. anyways, that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That, you know, that's really, it's, it sounds like you're very fluid. And um, I, I consider the things that we're learning right now to be tools that fit into a toolbox. And, um, and, and just knowing and we seem to be able to flow better uh in in this way but it's so great to be able to just pull out whatever it is that fits the situation and then flow with that and it, it brings brings you to a, a greater peace i think mm -hmm. and yeah awesome uh helen can i just share something yeah okay you were talking about yod heh vav -He. Yes. And I have started, I had stopped for a while. I've started doing it again. And I do it before I go to bed every night. Yeah. And this time, he's changed it on me again. Okay? Okay. And what happened was, I barely started the other night. And I do yod he shin vav -He. But when I do the letters, I actually engage with them because they are living beings, right? So when I engaged with Yod and I engaged in the spark of life 
the spark of light, the spark of everything, because it's an all creation. I literally became Yod. The light, the blue white light that came into me, like it let off this light. <laughs> it was more, oh my, it, it was amazing. It was like fireworks going off. That it is was incredible. That, that's exactly the kind of thing that starts to happen, isn't it? When you stand in his name. Yeah. That is, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's, it sounds really weird, doesn't it? I mean, who'd have thunk uh, years ago we'd be talking about standing in his name and, and living letters and colors and beings and uh, it just, it didn't fit into anything. And now it is everything. And it's just so natural, so it's just who we are. I love that. I love that. You became it. So good. So good. So Brenda, I'm going to put you on the spot. Where are you with this? How are you doing? Oh, good. I, I'm just taking it all in. It, it's just so interesting. And and uh, when when you're speaking, I just think of some of my life situations and some words that God has given me, um, and uh, and it's in the present. So it and so yeah, it's all I, you know. And I I love going back onto YouTube and listening to this all again because you just get more and more out of it. And so I think the more you begin to put it into practice, it becomes more real. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'm just learning from everybody. It's just wonderful. Thank you for that. that that's such a, I appreciate that. It's so key. It, it's, it's one of the things that, um, we, that we really need to grasp hold of. We need to engage in what we learn. We are, we are so knowledge dense, right? We, with the internet and our, uh, our, at our fingertips, we can get all this information, but now engaging in it, it takes time. It takes time. Yes, I just wanted to share an experience I had uh, the last couple of weeks when you were teaching on yud hey vav hey. Well, I was extremely tired. I had such a couple of busy days. So I was laying uh, and I said, Lord, I just need to fall asleep like now. So he just had me go, you know, to say the breathe in and breathe out. It was like, yud. and I did it. I think I only did it about six times like yud hey vav hey yud hey. And I was out like a light. <laughs> it was just so awesome. I woke up in the morning. And I said, that was so good just to, you know, just to say the, the letters of the name, the living letters. And it's just was so beautiful. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to have to make a practice of this. <laughs> you know, especially if you're not able to sleep or if you're if you get a little stressed out, sometimes I think you uh, don't tend to relax when you go to bed. So, but I knew I, I needed to get to sleep because I had to, another busy day coming up. So I said, well, I'm going to try this relaxing, just breathing in, taking it and relaxing. And it was just so awesome. I just loved it. And, and I went, okay. And so I just wanted to ask one question and, uh, oh, I forgot to write it down, I think. But I wanted to ask about... Um, uh, how do you command the morning? All right. It's a great question. It's a great question. You know, we, we can start our day um, in, a, in just normal, right? Uh, how many of you sleep with your phone beside your bed and you pick up that phone in the morning to see if I got any messages? Did I miss anything? Um, check your emails, your Facebook, whatever. 
<laughs> I see that face, Jerry. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and and it's just there, right? That 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 uh, that is not commanding your morning. That's letting your morning command you, because the I I when I say command your morning, when when we come to our day from the inside out, all of this is about our, living our life from the inside out. The power is not there out there. The power is within us to be released outward. And when you, um, when you said, I loved it when you said, uh, when I just take the breathe in, breathe out his name. Well, you know, we sing songs in churches, count, you know, this is the air I breathe. This is the, you know, we, we sing those and we have these holy moments. We're, we're called to the reality that every breath that we take is him. Every breath we exhale is him because he's in us. So uh, when you command the morning, the first thing you, you have to do is find the peace in you. And hence the heart brain coherence, the, the um, breathing and, and getting to that place of peace. Now, when you do that, then it's time, you know, the, the picture there where um, uh, I, when I just had that, the boy sitting and looking up into the heavens and it's uh, and, he, and there's health, wealth, wisdom, and love in there. Those are sort of four of the pillars that I command in my morning. And I will meditate in that place of, of, um, uh, of the heart brain coherence where you, you're at the 0 0.1. You're just at one with, with the earth at that time. And I will start visualizing health, not, not being healthy, not, not something that should happen, but just I'll just um, start meditating on that health, start meditating on wealth. What does that look like? On, on uh, wisdom, on love. When you start doing that, what happens is the Lord starts to take over and then you start visualizing the areas in your life that you're moving toward in all those areas and seeing happen in your life. That commands your morning because now you send out those thoughts, those visions of your truth into the day. And I'm going to say there are time and time and time again, health and healing comes, that the wealth comes, the wisdom comes, and greater love grows. So it's with purpose in that place of the 0 0.1 hertz that we can, we can uh, get our body into that we then see what we're called to do, what we're called to be and, and know. Gina. Um, uh, just to sort of expound upon that a little, little bit. Um, in, in that meditation time or the heart brain coherence time or the time in the morning or the time of the night, whenever is good for whoever you are. Um, <laughs> if you've seen it in your mind's eye, right. You remember it in your life. Yeah. If you haven't actually seen it, then you're more apt to see what's happening in front of you. Yeah. Um, so this, meditative prayer time that we what Helen was saying where we start seeing what health is for us or wealth or whatever we're you know believing for or whatever the Lord showed us or mm -hmm. baby or whatever if we see that in our mind's eye uh, we remember it and and that's part of holding that thing in your heart um, and Anne was talking about an ascension and what the Lord would show them. And it reminded me of on earth as it is in heaven. That's how we're supposed to pray. If we've seen it there in heaven, in the spirit, 
in our meditation, in our mind's eye, in the field, in the, in the mind of God, from the source, um, then how could it not manifest in the world? Like, how is that possible? It's not, <laughs> you know? So that, that's what I, I think of all the time, on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. How could it not manifest? So it really helps me then remember that faith is the substance, the matter. Yeah. The particle. That's right. Of the of yeah. things not seen. Yeah. Yet in this world. Yeah. But the evidence, the proof of the things seen in our imagination, in our meditation in the heavenly realm. So when, when I think about it that way, I think, well, on earth as it is in heaven. I'm like, it's pretty easy. There I, it is. How could it not yeah, be? I think that's brilliant. I think it's brilliant what you're saying and appreciate it very much. What 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 Gina's also saying, I'll, I'll just add a little bit onto that, is that if you can see it in your mind, you can have it. But you need to see it. You need to feel it as done, right? So when you command your morning, you see the areas that in your life that you are, are believing for as done. And you'll find yourself, those things will start coming to you. You won't need to go after them. You need to be in motion. You need to be uh, doing what you need to be doing. But the things that you are, are actually um, thinking about sending out into the, the uh, source, into the mind of God, actually then take on just like that, in, like, like an intention and, and create it and start moving towards you because it's real. Some of my commanding the morning uh, times are seeing myself really doing what Jesus did. I want, uh, because there's so much fear in this season right now, there's so much fear and uh, junk around us. Do you see yourself? Uh, and I, 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 uh, I love Kim um, Whitman's, her, her um, um, life scripture is on her, her email where it's in, in um, Zechariah 3, where he says, I will set a, a wall of fire around you and be the glory in your midst. See, I, I told Kim I, I'm going to uh, steal that and use it because I really like it. And um, so I, I see that. I command my morning seeing the fire of God around me and the glory in, in um, my midst that, that, he, that he's actively doing. So I don't... I don't I command that, not in the official command, like, uh, you know, you go do it. It just becomes my reality. So instead of using the term command, I would say, make your real decide what is your reality before you start your day. That's how I would say I command the day. That becomes my reality. I step into it. And it's so much easier to live in it. Because then when, when junk comes at you or fear and, and uh, trauma or, or things, you aren't living out of the place where it can touch you to the same degree as, as uh, your reality being the wall of fire around him and the glory in its midst. Does that help a bit? Yeah, okay. Could I add something to yeah. that, Helen? Uh, I'm sorry I'm speaking so much today. <laughs> no, you're lovely. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, again, going back to your Haitian vow, hey, when I do the vow, I become the conduit yes. between heaven and earth. And I actually pull down the atmosphere of heaven into my atmosphere here. And then I expand it to the whole area where I am, not just my home. That is so perfect. That is that is really so perfect, and that's that it, that's commanding your your day. You you're stepping. That's your reality. You are it. 
You're not looking for it out there somewhere. You're not looking for someone to do it for you, making it happen. You're already it and you can step in. So I mean, I obviously you're spending a lot of time uh, with the living letters and really reaping the, the benefits from knowing them. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, is everybody doing okay then? All right. Thank, thanks, Greg. You look relaxed in there. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry, do you have anything you want to say? Um, I don't feel qualified to say anything. But, oh, uh, not Molly. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a new I'm new at this. Uh, I'm really enjoying um, t tonight's talk on uh, visualizing outcomes um, and making that part of the prayer in the present tense, of course, because I have a few challenges coming up in the near future that. Um, I think that'll be very valuable for me. So I really appreciate everybody's comments. Uh, it's just wonderful to have so many uh, prayer warriors and it's, uh, it's really rubbing off on me. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, bless you. That lovely. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> and you've got a God squad for you too, Jerry. You know that. Okay. Well, I was just going to say quickly um, that it's um, a beautiful journey that we go on on our own. Um, and what you do on that journey is totally right. You know, sometimes we think, well, can I do this or can I do that? Or mm -hmm. if we are, you know, in Christ and we live and move and have our being in him. He directs us and guides us, guides us, and he's so faithful so that you don't have to worry about, I don't know, maybe this is for somebody. Uh, you don't have to worry about, oh, is this right? Is this wrong? Is this, is, am I doing this or should I do that? Or a what if and blah, blah, blah. Just go. Yeah. 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 That exactly. Exactly. That's a great, great word to, of encouragement to uh, end our evening on. This is this is amazing. So uh, before we go, Helen, I yeah. want to publicly thank you and Ed for the beautiful books. I mean, it is going to change those children's minds and change their lives. I'm so grateful and so appreciative. So thank you so much. Our pleasure. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> Thanks. Well, uh, Next next week, uh, Ed and I are are going to be at our summer home. We're on a uh, um, lake in another province, and heading out there tomorrow. We have to set up our internet, uh, which Ed believes he has in hand. We need a strong internet because our town has virtually been. Um, uh, D dismantled uh, this this uh, time of of COVID and businesses shut down. We've lost we've lost the vitality of our of the business sector in our town. There's one one two stores open, and last year with the internet being so um, goofy, I I would go into the coffee shop and do the zooms from there because our our zoom or our um, internet was unstable. We're really in the woods. We're in the middle of nowhere. And, um, uh, but Ed has plans for satellite connection. And uh, so unless you hear otherwise, we, we're going to be there. But if you would just check your, your email um, to make sure that I don't want to um, mess up the, the rhythm of things, but I will let you know right now, I'm, I'm seeing it up. I'm seeing it up and running, but I really will uh, double check with everybody and and let you know if we're if we're flying. So uh, and sorry, um, Helen, to yeah. interrupt. Yep. But Ed, do you have a booster that you can, um, you know, plug into your internet? Yeah, land. It's a matter of uh, putting up actually a satellite dish to connect with the 
satellites. It's, oh. So it's not just a booster that boosts what's already there. Uh, it, that uh, it's actually a whole new system that's in place. We're, we're in the middle of nowhere. And right now there are no internet towers close by to give us a really good or strong reception. But this one is supposed to connect to a satellite and should do that. Okay. Right, Ed? Right on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. So we'll have you next week then. We yeah. know we'll have you next week. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, it's been a beautiful evening. I love you. Love you. Love you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his faith upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Love you guys. Amen. Good night. Good night.